think the course uh, it it opened up another box for me. You can't diagnose uh, accurately a joint without an image. Yeah, or I mean, a bite. you can get a close or idea. Or a bite. Or well, right. Technically. Well, and that's here's the data. I enjoyed the joint aspect of it. I mean, I did. So you click on the left upper left window somewhere. Now hit your FFT. The third theory, the, the most recent theory, has actually been cited a few times, is now FDH. And we're going to talk a few minutes about that real quick. And I'm going to wrote about it. Zero to ten. That's like a ten. I mean, I can't do it more than that amount of time. I just can't. I can't That's not it. fun. One third of everybody that we see, that they've got the problem, okay? He was lucky. He only had four or five diagnoses. Dennis, right? What if I told you that's joint? Potentially. What we teach at CNO is measured anterior guidance because there's more to it than just timing. It's usually like the palatal incline. I'm ne almost never touching centric. Go hard and go left and open. Is that different? It definitely feels different, yeah. The working incites more muscular hyperactivity than the balancing, by the way. The diagnosis makes the difference. That's joint based occlusion. We'll talk about that later in lecture two. So the MRI and the CT tells me. So if they're not stable and adapted, I'm not going to do this to them in Japan or in the US, okay? What we do different is we look to see if they're stable and adapted. Nobody does that. Three-legged table, joint, joint, teeth. The anterior guidance is heavily dependent upon the joint, more so than the teeth. The teeth just take what this guy puts out, what the hinge puts out. And then what about these spikes here? Let's see, we'll cancel that one. And come over here, we'll do another one. I get a little anterior contact on that side sometimes. I'm studying present and future. I can predict that instrumentation such as this lets me arrive at a, not necessarily definitive diagnosis, but a differential. First of all, you can sense that it's genuine, but first that you gather all evidence, research, and then objectively make an opinion. You don't know what's going on with the joint, you can't know what's going on with the occlusion. So the T-scan is kind of mm -hmm. superfluous until you have an understanding of what the joints are doing. Joint. And there's ways to look clinically to help you decide when it's time to image. You don't have to image every patient. Right. No. But you need to understand how the hinges influence the occlusion. The secret right. to what you That's just huge. said is you don't have to image every patient, but you have to diagnose every patient. Bingo. And you have to know why. Proper diagnosis. The why comes before the how and the what. And the what. That's exactly, That's exactly right. You're right. Yeah. I think everybody should be members of the CNO, at least mm. get CNO information. Yeah. Smart moments are fixed. Smart moments. Pretty moment. cool. Close or open. open. And then go up, look at the soft tissue. You can see this is a retrodiscal tissues here. And here's your and here's your disc. That this disc is probably intact, but you're gonna see other people in which this morphology is altered and you're gonna get intermediate signal extending all the way to the margin and go like there's probably a tear there. Yeah, so it proved to us that we've got uh, cervical inputs and what are called sympathetic inputs coming in from your neck. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the puzzle. Head surface area should be higher than the coronoid process. Can you explain what, the what, 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 what is what there? All right, guys, thank Go you. Go to the CNL. CNL.